I'm Stu Miniman, and welcome to a special CUBE interview here at the Schneider Electric offices in Boston, Massachusetts. Happy to welcome to the program a first-time guest, Hervé Corre, who is the Chief Digital Officer at Schneider Electric. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Well, it's thanks a for little having rainy, me. Uh, but uh, that's what we can expect uh, in, in Boston. Uh, but say that. Lovely view. <laughs> uh, thanks so much. Thank uh, you. Great. So, uh, first of all, give us a little bit about your background. You're the, the chief digital officer today. We love talking to the CDOs. You've been a CIO. You've been a CFO, uh, and we'll definitely get into some of the organizational dynamics as to who reports to whom and who owns what and the like. Sure. So, um, you know, indeed, I started in finance. Actually, I did a lot of work in uh, in M and A. After a while, we acquired a pretty large uh, uh, company called APC, and I became the CFO and really working essentially on on post merger integration. Right. So how do we put all those pieces together? And when you do that, you quickly realize that actually technology is on the critical path all the time. So, you know, I developed quite a keen interest at that time for technology. And that's where when, when Schneider decided really to, to change its setup, to evolve its organization, we had a program called One Schneider. We created the CFO position and, and, and that's where basically I took the helm as, as the CIO for Schneider Electric. And, you know, over the time then, digital became a, feed, a, a thing. It was not just about, you know, how you digitize the company. It was also how you create a digital business. So that's how we created Schneider Digital, and I, I became the CDO. So all of this sounds like super logical right yeah. now. Of course, it was far more chaotic than that, yeah. but that's the overall arc of the story. Yeah, lots of politics we understand, organizations, uh, large M&As, we, we understand that there's challenges, things to work through. Uh, if you could, for our audience, uh, just frame Schneider Electric. I actually, you know, disclaimer, I worked for American Power Conversion uh, way back longer than I'd like to even admit, uh, but, you know, uninterrupted power supplies, they really helped create a market. Uh, had some excellent technology, strong engineering background, which is what led me to that company. But Schneider Electric today is, of course, uh, much bigger than just APC. G give us a little bit of a frame. So Schneider Electric is a pretty large uh, uh, global corporation. I think we employ something like 140,000 uh, 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 people, so so pretty large multi-billion uh, uh, company. Uh, um, we basically are in the business of energy management and industrial automation. We are specialists of that. Our core value proposition is really bringing efficiency and sustainability to our customer. Uh, uh, we do that in a number of areas, whether it's buildings, whether it's in, you know large infrastructures, data centers, uh, 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 factory floors, uh, uh, on, on, on industrial processes. But sort of a core common thread, if you will, is how you uh, you bring efficiency, sustainability to our to our customers. Great. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about your, your background as a CFO was to, to help with the merger. Uh, bring us up to what is your role as a chief data officer? What is the, what is the mandate you have? Uh, and we're, we're going to spend some time unpacking digital transformation. We always say uh, that the difference between a company before and after that digital transformation is that, you know data is so important. You must be data driven. You must understand it. And therefore, uh, often there is a, a CDO involved. So so what what led to this role and and what is that specific mandate that you have? Sure. So I, you know I did mention just before that. You know, we had uh, uh, um, the concept of efficiency, right? We try really, we have a, a value prop about, you know, uh, safety, reliability that over time evolves towards efficiency and sustainability. And in order to provide efficiency, whether it's in a building, whether it's an industrial uh, 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 building or process, uh, um, what needs to happen, it's not just with hardware, right? You need to be able to extract data uh, uh, from, from products, from systems. You need to be able to make sense of that data, uh, uh, to analyze it, and then to act on it. Right, so sort of close the loop from from uh, uh, data to insight, insights to action. So that's where, uh, 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 for us, the digital transformation was not just about digitizing ourselves, but it was also about augmenting the value proposition that we have for our customers, uh, augmenting what we can offer our customer base with those services that could push the boundaries of you know uh, uh, efficiency and, and, and sustainability and they were all about adding um, an information component right a data component uh, uh, on top of you know the best the best hardware on on, on, on software so that's sort of the the evolution and you were speaking about the mandate so the mandate is really around four things first is really 
so the digital business, so how we create uh, 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 digital offers that are going to augment, to complement uh, our existing offers, making, you know, uh, taking advantage of cloud, taking advantage of analytics, AIs, on, on, on providing, you know, uh, um, predictive maintenance, product providing optimization services, right, that can augment uh, uh, our value prop. It's also about bringing the ecosystem of partners that can really reinforce uh, uh, um, those, those value props, those, those digital offers. So it's really first about that digital business. Then it's about digitizing ourselves and it's three things. It's first how we engage customers, so uh, customers and partners, so thinking about what's our digital footprint, how we uh, 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 create basically a digital experience for our customers and partners that uh, uh, is even better than the one we're having on the physical world. Yeah. Then it's about operation, so our back-end systems, you know, making sure that we have uh, a, a back-end system that scales, and the last mandate is security. Okay. Um, it's a pretty broad mandate. A lot of things going on, 140,000 people uh, working for Schneider, not to mention you, you talked about your customers, your partners, all Absolutely. these things. But, you know, what's, what's the scope of this? How many years ago did this start? Is there a phased uh, rollout that you're looking? Is there, you know, was it just a budget assigned to it? Br bring us a little bit as to how this all rolls out. So, um, sure, a couple of things. I would say, uh, so we started three years ago, really the digital mandate, only that started well before. Because actually, uh, um, you know, if you're in the business of industrial automation, you haven't waited the advent of IoT to connect machines right. to a, a supervisory layer to controls etc now what happened is of course the power of the cloud the power of analytics and you could take things even even further so so really three years ago uh, 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 was when we started thinking about Schneider Digital and the way we thought about it is we didn't want it to be uh, uh, um, something totally on the side of a business so it's not a separate PNL it's not you know a, a separate organization we're serving the businesses we're augmenting the businesses we're providing them with transversal capability we're, pro we're providing our businesses with uh, 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 um, digital services, platform level components that they can reuse, etc. So can they, they can go faster in addressing uh, uh, um, their customers. And it was critical for us to find that, that sort of appropriate distance, if you will, because you need to incubate a digital business, but at the same time, if it just happens on the side, you never augment the core. On your, so you kind of lose right, the, main, the main benefit out of it. Yeah, uh, it's it's nice that you have the background of also being being a CIO. Everything that I'm hearing you talk about is uh, what we hear from many leading companies out there. That it's right. It's not just doing what the business asks. It's helping to often create new products, or you know, in many cases, even you know, it's innovation helping to drive the business. Um, I want to. Uh, you mentioned at the end of uh, w one of your last pieces talked about security. Uh, we, we it's something critical when you're talking about data and in your CDO role. T tell us a little bit about the the, the security of uh, how that's involved in this total solution. Sure. So far as you know, it's it's of course became you know more and more important over time, and we really had to rethink. Uh, 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 how we're approaching security, right? Going away from this idea of defending the perimeter, moving to concepts much more like a zero trust approach. Uh, 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 because the world has changed, we have employees that like to work from, you know, their, their taxis and planes, and and, uh, and and we had really to uh, to rethink the posture, right, of Schneider Electric, and also how we work with customers, and we can help how we can help our own customers improving the cyber security of their uh, building or industrial operations, right? So, so we have we see it as a pretty broad mandate, actually, quite end to end. Uh, uh, it's not just about you know building thick walls. I think the times of perimeter defense are, are, are long gone, but it's really about thinking about it as a full cycle from identification to recovery and, 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 and uh, putting a risk-based approach and, and, and some you know, continuous improvement approach into it. A lot of discipline, basically. All right. And and Hervé, uh, which uh, are there some partners that were Im important in this digital transformation? Um, so overall or specific in security? Uh, um, both, yeah. So, so yes, I mean, we have big partners and, and you know, you wouldn't, you could guess, right? I mean, of course, you know, we've, we are working a lot with, uh, with Amazon, we're working a lot with uh, um, 
uh, Microsoft, we're working uh, a lot with Salesforce, uh, uh, on the system integration side, you know, we work with Capgemini, with, with, with Accenture, so, so we have, of course, uh, uh, a bunch of, uh, of um, yeah, of a traditional partners, you know, would, you would expect. I mean, we try to be more and more very considerate about what we want to do ourselves and when we basically, you know, delegate some functional points to, to partners. And then we also created uh, um, an ecosystem of partners around security. And, and, and Schneider is a very partner-centric company because we actually work with partners most of the time so you know working as an ecosystem is actually something that's pretty natural to us we just had to learn how to do it in the in the digital age yeah that, that, that's great a company of your side right it's not only the suppliers there but but building that ecosystem um, yeah a, a, any anything uh, more on the security side that, that you want to call out uh, re regarding uh, that, that journey so you know we've been uh, we've been working we, we've developed a lot uh, 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 um, I mean, we felt that security was, it takes a village, right? And, and, and the ecosystem approach was even more important. So we've been working with the scaler on a, uh, a network level security. We've been working with uh, uh, um, IBM on, on, on Deloitte, on, on, on other areas. We've, we've been working with, uh, with Silence as well. I mean, I wouldn't, there's a long list, right? But, but we've tried to build an ecosystem both at a service level and at a solution level. Because the problem often with security is that, you know, you can have a lot of point solutions that would solve very narrow problem but it really you know what really makes a difference is your ability to integrate is your ability to have a pane of glass where you can figure out correlations on and then pretty quickly take action so so we striking that balance between adding solution that would add you new source of information new understanding of your context with the ability to act on this information. Yeah, and Hervé, what, what lessons have you learned going through this? You talked about the balance between what you do in-house versus what you uh, look to outside. Uh, that, that's a general trend we've seen in cloud for yes. the last 10 years or more. So, you know, looking back as to what you've done so far in three years, and any advice that you'd give to your peers? Probably three things. So the first thing you mentioned is the ecosystem, right? Is that it's not us versus them, it's how you embark an ecosystem of partner and how you bring some logic in that in that ecosystem so that's really key the second thing is really scale i think i always say that in digital it's always super easy you know to come with uh, uh, um, the latest shiny object to do a proof of concept etc but usually that doesn't matter the key source <laughs> the secret source is how you scale and often and in particular in today's world people tend to have a misconception of scale that this is just size actually very often in in, in um, you know, in digital, scale is about replicability, is how easy can you replicate, which is a slightly different concept when you think about it. But thinking scale first, I mean, you know, is so critical to us. On the third point uh, um, would be performance management. Actually, we've spent a lot of time defining, and maybe that's my roots as a finance person long time ago, but it's, you know, what does success mean? Right? What are the metrics of success? We call them the true north. What true norths are we pursuing? And how do we allocate resource? Because at the end of the day, you only scale if you're able to allocate resource. So if you want to have a sophisticated digital organization, you need to start by having a sophisticated resource allocation process. Yeah. Uh, how about the outcomes? Uh, you, you know, what if if ultimately your your end user uh, customers what do they see uh, out of this uh, digital transformation? And also, would love if there's any commentary on on the employees. We understand, uh, you know, getting them involved, uh, training and the like uh, can be challenging. Um, but uh, you know, ultimately, you know, how does digital impact both your external and internal customers? Sure. So let me unpack that. Right. In terms of true north or outcomes, the key thing we we look at. First is how we create the digital business. On how much are we uh, uh, creating adoption, right, with our customers? So we really track, you know, how many new things we on our ecosystem. Uh, uh, how much more value are we creating uh, 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 to our customers? Are those customers adopting uh, 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 those new value points, those new solutions, those new those new ideas? So so and of course, you know, how much are we growing behind that, etc. But it's really this idea of of value and adoption to start with. When we look at the uh, 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 the engagement, the customer side, we look at the 
customer satisfaction in the physical world and we compare it with the customer satisfaction in the digital world and we want the two to be at par. When it comes to the backend, we look at how much we're simplifying that backend for, for uh, uh, um, so we're tracking technical depth and so forth. Um, and then on security, we look at external scoring uh, so that we always you know, keep ourselves <laughs> honest with external uh, uh, assessment on how we're doing. So that's basically you know, how we look at the four dimensions that I was, beginning, that I was mentioning at the beginning. To answer the second part of your question, which was more around employees, I mean, it's a huge effort, of course, you know, creating the organization, a lot of recruitments, uh, a lot of training. We've been working a lot on, you know, providing you what we call ci uh, digital citizenship course, on, on up to very technical course. So we refined completely uh, uh, um, our approach to learning. And there are many, many aspects of the employee experience that we've been working on. I mean, providing mobility, providing, you know, on, on finding that balance right between security and enabling the new world of work where people are going to work on the go and, and offering them a much better level of um, um, of access basically to the corporate resources mobile and so forth this has been a massive transformation over the year yeah Irve, the, the last thing i'd like to ask you just uh, you know the, the changing dynamics of organizations today uh, as we started out talking you know cdo is still a relatively new mm -hmm. role out there the role of the cio has changed an awful lot oh, yeah. uh, you know over the, the the length of our career so you know what are you seeing in those dynamics you've worn both of those hats uh, and you know wh where, where do you where do you see things going and anything you uh, feedback you'd give to the industry uh, to to make the lives easier of the cdos and cios out there well i think it's you know, I would say I've seen the roles held very differently from an industry to another. So, you know, it's it's probably hard to replicate from, you know, the, the, the energy management and industrial automation industry to others. Uh, um, but in an industry like ours, where the products are becoming digital, because basically, you know, you want to create data in the real world, you want to be able to process that data, create insights from that data, and then you want to be able to act on the real world based on those data, you really need to look at those two aspects. And there was a great actually paper from MIT a while ago about digitized and digital. So really, I like to say digital is really about creating this digital business, you know, real world data, transforming this real world data in insights and action and then acting in the real world. While CIO has mostly been about how you are digitizing the company, right? So uh, the employee experience, the customer experience, the partner experience, having transforming your backend into a machine that scales on both equally share that last mandate, uh, uh, that's even a broader mandate I, at the level of the enterprise that goes with security. So that's how I would roughly, uh, uh, if you will, uh, 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 you know, define the space. Hervé well, Carré, thank you so much for sharing your experiences. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Thanks for having me. All right, I'm Stu Minnan. We're here at Schneider Electric's office in Boston, Massachusetts. And as always, thanks for watching theCUBE. <laughs>